Welcome to the MOOCs course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Pulp and Paper Industry Part 2. In the previous class, we started discussing about pulp and paper industry. So, before going into the details of today's lecture, we have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous lecture on pulp and paper industry. We started with the uh, introduction on Indian chemical uh, industry, especially Indian paper industry. We realized that you know it is more than 100 years old and then first to start uh, uh, paper industry with bamboo raw material. Bamboo raw material uh, has not been used by any other paper industry, any other uh, uh, countries before India. India or Indian paper industry is the first one to use bamboo raw material uh, for the uh, paper production because it is having a value in terms of uh, uh, long fibers and then strength of the fiber is good. So, because of this one whatever the uh, paper quality that you produce is going to be a better one. So, that is how uh, bamboo is advantageous over uh, other raw materials. But however, you know cultivation of uh, uh, bamboo to the degree where the demand for the paper can be met is not there. So, there is a gap between the demand and production. So, because of that one different other raw materials uh, uh, were uh, tried and then both conventional and non-conventional raw materials can be used in fact. Of course, it has been found that if the uh, other raw materials are uh, blended with uh, bamboo. So, then uh, you know uh, better quality paper can also be produced by that way also. Then we uh, have discussed about uh, Indian paper industry groups based on the size of the units and then sources different uh, six difference of uh, uh, Indian paper industries uh, are there. So, those things we have discussed. Then this pulp whatever you produce for making the paper is nothing but the uh, cellulose, uh, commercial uh, name of uh, pulp is nothing but the cellulose. So, then requirement of uh, uh, cellulose uh, raw materials also we have discussed that is you know availability throughout the year to the pulp industry and then uh, production cost, the quality of the paper and all those things are you know being affected by the type of raw material that you have taken. So, then requisites of cell cellulose raw materials we have discussed and then we have discussed types of uh, uh, raw materials like you know softwood, hardwoods, grasses etc. those things we have discussed with some example. Then uh, we uh, discuss, started discussing on methods of pulp production where we have seen primarily three methods like you know uh, mechanical or uh, groundwood method and then chemical and then semi-chemical methods we have seen. So, this chemical method is again having two methods, two uh, approaches, two processes. Uh, sulphate uh, process and then sulphite uh, process. This is uh, this uh, sulphate process is also known as the craft process. Here you know you use uh, sulphates like Na2SO4 uh, in the digester. So, but directly you do not use Na2SO4. Uh, what is happens like you know Na2SO4 reacts with uh, you know uh, carbon that is present in the uh, raw material to give uh, Na2S plus CO2. So, this NO2S is coming into the digester through the liquors, right. So, that is what we have seen. So, that is the reason this process is known as the sulphide process whereas, the sulphide process different types of magnetite uh, sulphide process, neutral sulphide process etc. are available because these are known as the sulphide processes because of uh, you know nature of the you know uh, chemicals that are uh, used for in the uh, digestion, right. So, uh, here what we have sodium sulphite you have Na2SO3 whereas, here Na2SO4 in sulphate. You also have you know sodium uh, bisulphite, magnesium bisulphite etc. Sulphites are being used in this process. So, uh, these processes are known as the sulphide processes. Then we have seen the uh, comparison of uh, these processes including uh, different characteristics like you know uh, 
uh, trade name type of raw materials and then type of digesters reaction uh, digestion conditions are temperature pressure conditions time of the uh, digestion etc all those comparisons also we have seen and then we have also compared the uh, type of uh, uh, pulp that you are going to get brown or uh, white color pulp or you know dull white color pulp and then what are the end products produced from uh, sulphate uh, process uh, sulphate uh, process as well as the sulphide process we have seen uh, in a comparison table. Then we started discussing on the production of pulp by sulphate process right in which there are uh, 5 different uh, steps or important steps are there out of which 4 steps we have already discussed. Now today we are going to the fifth step. However, before going to the fifth step of uh, uh, sulphate or craft process, we are going to have the uh, recapitulation of those four steps once again. Pulp production by sulphate process, it includes uh, five major steps. First one is the digestion of wood based materials, second one is the modified process for the uh, bagasse and then bleaching of pulp is the third one. Fourth one is finishing operation of pulp if you are producing only pulp if you are not going for the paper from within the same industry. And then fifth one is the recovery of chemicals. So this is what we are going to discuss today. So we have already discussed these four steps. However, we are going to discuss them uh, once again here. So let us say flowchart this is what we have uh, whatever the logs are there, barked logs etc are there that wood chips whatever the wood you take you know logs of woods you know debarked by uh, you know tumbling and rubbing kind of action then they would be taken to a chipper where uh, heavy uh, revolving knives are there. So when the material comes into a interact when the uh, wood material or uh, logs come into and come into the uh, uh, this uh, chipper you know uh, they will interact with the strong rotating uh, knives then the, those knives will cut down this uh, wood into the uh, flat uh, chips shape of having 2 to 5 centimeters. Those chips we take into the chip bin. Then through a star wall what we do? We take uh, those chips to a deaerator and preheater uh, equipment that is this one. Right. So, here the purpose is to remove some kind of moisture etc. So, that is done by using the steam, that is done by using the steam. Okay. Right. So, once uh, doing this process for uh, roughly 5 minutes or so, what we do? Uh, we take this one uh, to the lift line by this, uh, by operating this tapered plug wall. Right. But however, this material whatever is there that is in solid chips, solid chips you know uh, they may not able to convey easily. For that purpose what you do? You uh, recirculate the liquor at uh, 12 to 15 atmosphere pressure. So then this uh, liquor when it um, enters the lift line at such pressure, it will also take the chips to the top of the continuous digester. In the continuous digester different sections are there, different you know screens are also available to uh, maintain the flow or the control the drop of the uh, chips from top to down as well as to maintain the uh, temperature different heat sources are also po provided. Okay. At the top 140 to 150 degrees centigrade and then at the bottom 65 degrees are maintained or in between around 170 to 180 degrees centigrade are maintained. Right. The height of the column is roughly 25 to 30 meters. Okay. So, in this column what are we giving? We are also giving a mixture of white liquor and then black liquor. Black liquor is nothing but whatever the liquor that you get uh, in the pulp process after making the pulp, you know that liquor is having almost 98 to 99 percent of uh, chemicals. You know uh, what chemicals they will have? They will have chemicals like you know required Na2S. Uh, Na2CO3, NaOH etc. such kind of chemicals are there. You cannot afford to throw them. So, you have to recover and then these chemicals are also required for the uh, digestion purpose. So, that is the reason. So, the same liquor, some of the same black liquor is also uh, 
uh, sent to the digester so that whatever the chemicals that are present in the black liquor they will cause the required uh, hydrolysis of the wood and then required digestion of the wood that can take place. Right? So, for this purpose some white liquor is also used you know black and white liquor are mixed and then sent to the digester using a centrifugal pump. Okay? So, but uh, by the time uh, the wood uh, digested wood comes down to the bottom of the uh, continuous digester temperature has to be reduced because you cannot take uh, such high temperature material out of the reactor some uh, suddenly. Right? Otherwise, you know what will happen the strength of the uh, pulp would be decreasing or the fiber strength whatever would be there that would be reduced. So, that is the reason some of the black liquor is also sent to the bottom of the continuous digester so that to reduce the temperature to 60 degree centigrade roughly to that one. So, then this mixture is taken to the strainer and from there to the blow tank where further it is uh, you know uh, temperature is reduced. Uh, uh, approximately uh, 30 degree centigrade or so and then you are recovering heat so that heat is recovered in the form of steam. That same steam what are you doing you are uh, uh, circulating recirculating back to preheater. Okay? From the continuous digester whatever the mixture is coming after reducing the temperature that is passed through screens. Right here in the screens knots and undigested residues etc are separated whereas the pulp uh, slurry whatever is there uh, that would be passed through uh, rotary vacuum dryers where hot uh, water is sprayed for the uh, washing of the pulp purpose. So, when you wash it so then you get the liquor so that liquor uh, is having uh, chemicals so such chemicals has to be recovered so that is what we are going to discuss in the next slide. Right? So, some of the black liquor as mentioned you know sent to the top of the digestion column along with the white liquor whereas the sum of the black liquor is sent to the bottom of the digestion column to reduce the temperature of the digestion mixture before taking it to the next level of the strainer. Right? Whereas the pulp whatever you get 70 percent roughly is dried and sent to the paper mill for making the papers whereas the roughly 30 percent is sent to the bleaching plant because pulp is nothing but the commercial cellulose. So, different types of uh, cellulosic derivatives can also be made by this pulp. So, for that purpose the uh, required bleaching has to be done after the bleaching they will be you know used for uh, different cellulose derivatives production. Right? So, now uh, this is uh, primarily about the digestion and then coming to the Second step that is modified uh, process for the bagasse, whatever the method that we discussed that is uh, discussed for you know uh, primarily for uh, you know uh, wood material, but if you have the bagasse then what happened you know uh, dirt and uh, pith may be there. So, you need to do deep pithing. So, how it is done? It can be done by wet grinding, wet grinding mills. Uh, or uh, hammer, wet grinding hammer mills etc. you can use. So, when you take this material bagasse material and then you use the water and then do the wet grinding. So, when you do the wet grinding when you hammers give the impact on the bagasse you know the cellulosic uh, fibers whatever are there they will not uh, shredded they will not be broken down rather pits whatever are there they will be you know diluted or washed out with the water. So, that way you can uh, remove such kind of pith etc. and then once uh, removing this pith that you can use for the you know sulphate process as we have done for the uh, wood based raw materials just now as we have discussed it. Okay? Then next important step is the bleaching of the pulp. Bleaching of the pulp is in general uh, done by using oxidizing agents. Right? Usually uh, chlorine dioxide is used, but you know uh, by using uh, chlorine dioxides what happens you know the dioxins uh, kind of uh, impurities or you know un undesired chemicals formation taking place. So, that is the reason people started using hydrogen peroxide, but hydrogen peroxide combined with uh, NaOH it has uh, proved to be better uh, digesting agent. But however, in the mixture in order to maintain the H2O2 concentration up to the desired level you know sodium silicates are also added Na2SiO3 are also added in order to maintain the balance of H2O2. Right? So, this is how uh, bleaching of the pulp is done. So, once the bleaching has been done uh, you can assume that you know the almost all colors have been removed almost like you know uh, 
uh, white color pulp you can get. So, that pulp you have to do the uh, finishing operation, finishing operation in the sense that removing of the water because whatever the pulp that you get it is having so much of water. So, what you, how you do? Uh, you do with the hydraulic press or pressing by hydraulic press at uh, 200 to 300 atmospheres or even high pressure. Right. So, then after that you know uh, whatever the material is coming after the hydraulic press that uh, dewatered pulp you can uh, further dry in vacuum flash dryers. Further if you wanted to do dewatering what you can do? You can do so called you know extrusion, extrusion in the form of tablets and then pills etc. those kind of forms they can be made. Okay. So, these processes you know selection of these processes depends on the what is the percentage of uh, solids that you like to have in the pulp. Right? So, all these steps are required to do if you wanted to have a you know more than 90 percent solids in the pulp with less water or moisture. Okay? If you are happy with uh, 40 to 50 percent of the solids in the pulp, then if you do only hydraulic press that would that would itself is sufficient enough. So, now the next step is the recovery of chemicals as we have seen whatever the uh, liquor that is having you know it is having chemicals like Na2S, Na2CO3, NaOH etc. depending on the process and then raw materials that have been used. So, uh, and then they are present in uh, large quantity like 98 to 99 percent of black liquor is uh, you know chemicals only. So, you cannot afford uh, releasing such chemicals because of the environmental concern as well as from the economics point of view because you need large quantity of these chemicals. If you are throwing without recovering, so then your plant is not going to be economically feasible. So, that is the reason you must recover these chemicals and then uh, whatever the white liquor is there you have to reuse for the digestion purpose okay? so that the process uh, goes continuously. Now, recovery of chemicals, uh, black liquor from a blow tank contains 98 to 99 percent of digestion chemicals which must be recovered in order to avoid water and air pollution problems and to provide a balanced economy of operation because such large amount of chemicals if you are releasing or wasting so that is not going to be economical. How such kind of recovery is done? It is done uh, by several steps. First step is multi effect evaporation using 5 to 6 stages of uh, calendry equipment followed by disc operators which concentrate the liquor. Okay? Initial liquor whatever you feed is having 15 to 18 percent of solids in the black liquor. In the black liquor initially 15 to 18 percent solids are there. Right? So, whereas the uh, colors or chemicals you know 98 to 99 percent are there. So, from 15 to 18 percent solids to the point where combustion can be sustained in a smelting waste heat boiler to that level you know concentration is concentration of the solids increased. Actually the solids are nothing but uh, some kind of you know uh, cellulosic or uh, non-cellulosic component that has not been converted into the pulp. Okay? So, that means that those components must be having carbon atoms because those cellulosic or non-cellulosic components of uh, wood material whatever is there. So, that is nothing but you know uh, biopolymer. So, in the uh, biopolymers you have the organic components uh, having the C, H, O, etc. So, but that can be combustible if uh, you know sufficient amount of uh, solids are there. 15 to 18 percent of solids are only there in the liquor, so then that is not going to be combustible. Even if it is combustible that combustion cannot be sustained. So, that would be increased to 40 to 65 percent and then that would whatever the black liquor having uh, 40 to 60 percent that would be sent to a smelting furnace. Right? So, increasing the solids concentration from 15 to 18 percent to uh, a range of 40 to 60 percent is done in multiple effective operation process. Okay? Organic carbon burns in the smelting furnace supplying the necessary heat and CO2 to produce an inorganic molten slag or smelt. So, this is the one from which you recover the uh, chemicals, inorganic chemicals. Okay? So, flow chart we discuss here first you know before going to the remaining steps. 
here uh, what we have? We have a black liquor which is coming out uh, from the pulp plant or after pulping whatever the black liquor you get that is having you know 15 to 18 percent solids. That solids uh, fed to a multi effect evaporator in a counter current uh, system. What do you mean by counter current system? Actually in evaporator you know uh, removing the moisture content, water content is being done actually. That is done by uh, supplying the steam, right? That steam and then this uh, black liquor feed are entering in counter current direction so that to improve the interaction between them, right? So, in this process whatever the water vapors etc are released they will be collected from the top and then checked for their uh, concentration and then accordingly uh, discarded, right? Whereas, the material that whatever the black liquor going out from the multi effect evaporator that would be having around 48 to 54 percent solids. This would be passed through a rotary dryer, right? That rotary dryer drying of the uh, black liquor would be done in that rotary dryer so that solid concentration increases to 60 to 65 percent. How it is done? Because here also a kind of a removal of water is taking place for that purpose hot flue gases which are coming from this melting process uh, or smelting furnace they are being used, right? So, in this process whatever the vapors or gases etc are there they will be taken to a cotrel precipitator in order to check the solids content. If this more solids contents are there in these gases or vapors they will be collected in the precipitator whereas the gas is only sent to the stack, okay? Such solids you collected and then you, uh, you can uh, use it for uh, different purpose based on the quality and then quantity etc. Okay? So, but they would be in general very minor quantities less than 1 percent or something like that. So, then these solids are uh, black liquor actually what do you mean by this uh, solids etc here you know percentage of uh, solids in liquor. Right? So, uh, liquor which is having now 60 to 65 percent solids is mixed with uh, makeup chemicals like Na2SO4 plus uh, sulfur etc. This is uh, we are talking about the craft process so Na2SO4 has been added here, okay? sulphate process. So, in the mix tank the liquor which is having 60 to 65 percent solids would be mixed up with the makeup chemicals like Na2SO4, sulphur etc and then that would be fed to smelting furnace. The combustion chamber of that uh, smelting furnace is shown here. To this furnace preheated air is supplied, preheated air is supplied so that the carbonaceous material that is present in the liquor can be combusted, right? For that purpose this preheated air is supplied, okay? Right. So, here uh, whatever this uh, Na2SO4 is there that react with the C of the uh, solids that are present in the uh, liquor and then that will form Na2S plus CO2. So, in the uh, smelter other reactions also takes place. Let us say NaR which is nothing but uh, you know lignin salt that will react with the preheated air to get Na2CO3 plus CO2 etc. Right? In the uh, subsequent uh, causticizing section other reactions takes place uh, where Na2CO3 reacts with calcium hydroxide to give NaOH plus calcium carbonate. This calcium carbonate will decompose into calcium oxide plus uh, carbon dioxide. Calcium oxide further reacts with water to give calcium hydroxide. The purpose of these reactions, this process is that whatever the NaOH required for the digestion purpose that we are getting you know uh, here itself within the process. That is the reason though for a ton of pulp production you may be requiring only uh, 40 to 50 kgs of uh, Na2SO4 because most of the chemicals are being produced here and then reused. Okay? 
but for this purpose calcium hydroxide is required that calcium hydroxide also you are getting within the process because whatever the calcium carbonate has formed within the uh, crusticizing unit that would be decomposed into calcium oxide and water and then that calcium oxide may be rehydrated to give the calcium hydroxide. This calcium hydroxide again you can reuse to react with uh, sodium carbonate to get the required NaOH for the digestion purpose. Okay. So, uh, such in all those reactions takes place here actually in fact here in this uh, combustion chamber only these reactions takes place. Okay. Whereas, these remaining reactions takes place here in the in this uh, section. Okay. So, once the sufficient combustion has been taken place what you can do? you know smelt whatever the uh, molten slag that is formed at the bottom of the uh, smelting furnace that is nothing but inorganic uh, slag. So, that you can take to dissolved tank where you add cold water or it interacts with cold water so that you know you get the green liquor. right? So, this green liquor is sent to a clarifier where clear filtrate you take. right? So, whatever the clarified liquor is there that would be taken to a lime sl uh, slaker and then to causticizing tank where it reacts with calcium hydroxide. Then this process after the causticizing whatever the material is there or the uh, mixture is there that would be taken to the clarifier because here what you get you also have the calcium oxide etc. So, those calcium oxide etc you have to remove as carbonate mud and then whatever the clear white liquor is there that you take to the storage or to the digestion tank. Okay? So, whatever the calcium oxide etc is there that would be processed through rotary filter press uh, to separate out the more liquor if at all it is having some uh, liquor. So, that would be taken to the dissolved tank whereas the sludge is there that would be taken to the lime kiln where fuel gases are used to convert this lime into the calcium carbonate and then reburn lime whatever is there that is taken back to the uh, lime slacker storage. Okay. Uh, whatever the solids that you get from the clarifier that you wash in washing tanks after washing the sludge whatever is there you filter out and then take it as a waste sludge. But when, do, when you do the washing there would be uh, filtrate liquor, uh, wash liquor would be there that wash liquor would be sent back to the dissolved tank again because this wash liquor will also be having some kind of chemicals. Okay? So, that has to be uh, re-looped within the process so that uh, you know as much uh, recovery of chemicals as possible. So, whatever the white liquor that you get here so that would be free from the chemicals. The white liquor we are not calling as water, but we are calling it as white liquor because it may be having some amount of uh, pulpy materials without any chemicals. Okay? So, since it is having some amount of pulpy materials, so that can be taken back to the digester as a uh, recycle process as we have discussed in the previous slide when we are discussing about the digestion of uh, you know, wood by craft process just in the previous slide we have discussed it. Okay. Right. So, this is how chemical recovery has been done in uh, craft process. This is also part of the craft process or sulphate process. Only thing that you know the recovery chemical recovery part I have shown as a uh, separate uh, flow chart because otherwise both the flow chart if you are combining together that would become very clumsy and difficult to explain. So, whatever the black liquor that we get from the previous flow chart is sent here in the multiple effective operator and this process continues. Whatever the white liquor you get after recovering the chemicals, this white liquor is uh, fed back to the uh, digestion tank that we have discussed in the previous flow chart. Okay? Otherwise, logically both the flow sheets are part of one particular process that is that is a uh, craft sulphate pulp process. Okay? For smelting purpose the makeup alcohol is supplied via Na2SO4 as per the reactions which I have already explained that is lignin salt react with the preheated A to get Na2CO3 and CO2. This Na2CO3 may be further used uh, you know uh, in the uh, causticizing tank 
whereas Na2SO4 that is fed to the system you know uh, that reacts with the carbon that is present in the you know solid material that is present in uh, black liquor having 60 to 65 percent solids. So, when it reacts with that carbon it will produce Na2S. This Na2CO3 will react with calcium hydroxide to give sodium hydroxide. This sodium hydroxide again you can reuse for the digestion purpose, but this process also forms calcium carbonate which is uh, slightly difficult to remove. For that purpose what you do? You decompose into the calcium oxide and then carbon dioxide. This calcium oxide further you rehydrate so that to get calcium hydroxide and then that calcium hydroxide you can reuse within the process. So, by following these steps what happens? The dependence on the chemicals required for the pulp process would decrease because they are being recovered and within the process they are reused. Molten smelt falls into a dissolver where it contacts cold H2O to yield green liquor solution. Insoluble impurities such as unburned carbon are settled out and the clear liquor causticized by adding lime. Filtration removes the calcium carbonate sludge while the filtrate white liquor is returned to the digester so that the digestion may be facilitated right in the continuous digestion section. Carbonated uh, sludge is calcined to lime for uh, recycle purpose. Okay. This is about the uh, recovery also. So, now within the craft process we have seen all the steps. We have seen all 5 steps of you know uh, digestion of wood based raw material, bleaching of uh, uh, pulp and then uh, uh, use of alternative raw material. So, what are the modifications required and then uh, finishing of the pulp and then finally, recovery of chemicals. So, with this uh, craft process is complete. So, now what we are going to see? We are going to see major engineering problems associated with the craft or sulphate process for the pulp production. Choice of processes is one important uh, issue to consider. Then use of soda process, there is other process other than the sulphate and sulphide process. There used to be soda processes earlier. So, uh, what are the issues with the using of soda process we have to discuss. Then pollution and waste disposal. We see that you know in pulp uh, industry, pulp and paper industry large amount of water is being used and a large amount of uh, liquor is also being produced. Right? Such large amount of liquor you know after recovering chemical also sometimes somehow you have to dispose. Right? So, how to dispose that is also one concern. So, one has to pay attention to that one also. Then byproduct utilization, it is possible to have some amount of uh, uh, byproduct uh, recovery like uh, resins etc. or from the lignin to get some value added chemicals etc. Such kind of possibilities are there, so then we are going to discuss all of them now. Choice of processes, demand for high strength good quality paper products has reduced the choice to either chemical sulphide or sulphate process whereas the sulphate process is leading the game right so why because you know we have seen you know if you wanted to have high strength good quality paper uh, you know you cannot get such good quality paper by mechanical method so you have to go for the chemical method so out of the two chemical methods sulphate process is better because the sulphide process you know uh, uh, water pollution issues are there or the chemical recovery is very tough or you know large amount of you know different types of liquors are produced in sulphide processes. So, their recovery is an issue and then because of that one economics is also an issue for the sulphide process. Because of such reasons sulphate process is leading the race. Important advantages of sulphate process over sulphide process are raw material quality has less significance in the sulphate process. In comparison table we have seen uh, in previous lecture, the craft uh, or sulphate process is there, it can uh, work with any type of raw material. Whereas, sulphide process is suitable only for the bagasse and then hard wood kind of raw materials only. Sulphate fibers have superior strength characteristics as already mentioned. 
Neva development in sulphide uh, processing will help to keep this type of pulping from becoming obsolete. Actually, you have to do some kind of newer development. In fact, researchers have developed certain kind of uh, new uh, chemical recovery processes where nowadays sulphide processes are also becoming economical, right? So, we see some of them now anyway. Economics and waste disposal laws have virtually eliminated. And then there used to be other uh, sulphide processes uh, in olden days like calcium sulphide process. Right? They are now almost like uh, eliminated because of economics and then waste disposal problems because such kind of problems are not existing in modern uh, plants where sodium or magnesium based salts are being used in the sulphide process. These processes also provide higher yields, allow more flexibility in raw materials, produce a type of waste liquor wherein the pantasones are present, they can be fermented to ethanol, so that way uh, they are better. Latest trends in large pulping plants is to integrate operations where both processes can be used in the same plant. In the comparison we have seen that you know if you have a neutral sulphide process, so then what you can do? You can use the craft plant itself uh, you know for uh, running the neutral sulphide process such, such things are possible right this is possible with the neutral sulphide process right since the only change in uh, black liquor is carbonation of green liquor followed by oxidation of na2s with co2 to produce na2so3 whereas causticization step which is present in the sulphide process that is omitted Right? So, this flow chart we are going to see in the uh, next step where primarily what is happening oxidation of Na2S with CO2 is taking place so that to get Na2SO3. How it is that we are going to see in flow chart. Mostly the process is similar like you know whatever we have seen for the recovery of chemicals from the liquor that is obtained from the craft process, but only thing that there we have causticizing step. Now here rather causticizing you have the uh, sulfiting and carbonating towers. Before that whatever the steps are there they are quite similar. So whatever the liquor that you get here also roughly 15 to 18 percent solid should be there and then uh, remaining uh, liquid whatever is there that liquid would be containing 98 to 99 percent chemical here also. right? So these chemicals has to be recovered both from the pollution concerns point of view as well as from the economics of the plant. You cannot afford to have the so much of chemicals losing every time. right? So, for that purpose of recovery this uh, flow chart is here. Now, the starting point is you know here also multi effective operator is used. So, that to increase the solid concentration in the black liquor from 15 to 18 percent to 50 to 60 percent roughly or 45 to 55 percent that can be done by evaporation of the liquid that is present in the liquor and then that evaporation of uh, liquid can be done by heating and then heating is done by the steam. That steam and then liquor are you know uh, entering the multi effect evaporator in the counter current way. Right? After this multi effect evaporator process whatever liquor you get that would be having you know roughly 50 to 60 percent solids only 40 to 50 percent liquid should be there. So, now after improving the solids concentration in the black liquor by evaporating the water, you know what you do? You mix with the makeup chemicals like sulphur etc. If required you know sodium sulphide etc. may also be added and then that liquor would be sent to the uh, smelting furnace. Right? In the smelting furnace what happened? Carbonaceous material would be combusted. Right? For that purpose preheated air is being supplied. When this uh, combustion takes place you get the flue gas as well as the inorganic smelt. Right? So, the flue gas what you do? The flue gases having SO2 and then CO2 would be sent to a sulfiting tower where whatever the chemicals that are present in the black liquor liquid. So, you know mostly they will be converting into the 
sodium sulfide, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, these kind of chemicals. Of course, they will not be in pure conditions, but still in the liquor condition. So, that you can collect as a cooking liquor and then take it to the digester if required. If the more purification is required, then what you do? Whatever the flue gases uh, with CO2 only because in the sulfiting tower you do the sulfination so that to get the, the sulfites etc. So, after that primarily flue gases would have CO2 only. Those things you take to the uh, carbonating tower where uh, carbonation takes place and then you get sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonates etc. So, if required sodium carbonates make up chemicals may be added so that uh, you get a carbonated liquor storage. This liquor what you can do? You can send back to sulfiting tower so that whatever the carbonates etc are there, they will be forming sulfites like Na2SO3. Okay. Whereas, the inorganic smelt whatever is there that is taken to a dissolver where cold water is used to dissolve the inorganic smelt, then you get a green liquor. That green liquor would be having the solids as well as uh, you know liquor, right? So the waste solids you have to separate out by a clarifier. Whatever the solids that you get, the waste uh, slurry you get, that you further wash it with water, and then wash water you may be reusing into the dissolver. Whereas the sludge, you know, almost like a little water or no water, that would be taken as a waste. Whereas the clarified liquid from the liquor clarifier whatever is there that you take it to the green liquor storage which would be having Na2S, Na2CO3 etc. Since Na2S is there so that you send it back to the carbonating tower and then from there you get the uh, carbonated liquor storage that liquor again you uh, send back to the sulfiting tower so that Na2SO3 you get and then that liquor may be reused to the digester. Remember only this liquor is uh, reused in the digester for the sulfite process whereas these things you have to do separate processing if you otherwise you know you have to do the process continuously until there is no green liquor or almost all chemicals have come into the cooking liquor so that that cooking liquor you can use uh, or reuse into the digester of a neutral sulfite pulp process, right? Second engineering problem is use of soda process. Small tonnage that is small capacity 25 to 50 tons per day of plants use process which involves hydrolysis with sodium hydroxide and sodium bicarbonate at 4 by 1 ratio. It is having advantage of lowest cost if chemicals are not recovered and no sulphur requirement is there. Whenever there is a sulphur requirement, you know, H2S formation, SO2 formation would be there, then environmental concerns would definitely be there. So, but such problem is not there in the soda process. But the soda process produce inferior grade pulp, that is the reason it is not used for, you know, uh, in a large uh, tonnage plants, okay. That also at high cost in batch operations. Continuous process is not possible, it has to be done in the batch operation and because of the batch operation the cost is high and then pulp quality is also inferior. It is not used for modern large tonnage pulp plants where recovery of chemicals is an economical necessity because of such reasons I know this pulp by a use of soda process is not preferred especially for a large tonnage plants. Next is pollution and waste disposal problems. Large water requirements of pulp and paper mills coupled with stringent steam and air pollution laws forced pulp manufacturers to undertake a major research and development program for waste disposal and water reuse. And as a result, Sulphite pulp producers came up with economic chemical recovery processes and now the advantage over sulphate plants is being able to operate at lower order level in both air and water. So, you know compared to the uh, sulphate plants, you know uh, the sulphite plants they are able to develop some kind of uh, new methods for the chemical recovery because of that one the sulphide processes are also able to operate at lower order levels in both uh, air and water. So, air and water pollution is reduced by these 
new methods that is what it means to. But however, we are not going into the details of uh, such processes, they are part of the research. The last uh, major engineering issue of uh, you know pulp production is by product utilization. Gum, resin and oil fraction from soft wood furnishes the uh, novel stores products of tall oil, resins, turpentines, etc. Is there. So, one has to see how one can recover them so that you know this by product can also give money to the you know pulp and paper industry owners. These are obtained from gum flowing from live coniferous trees and from their stems. This can be accomplished by steam distillation or naphtha ex extraction or from chemical pulp processes, any of the process can be used. The products are in steady demand with a vigorous product application research responsible for a favorable picture. Many tall oil products now appear in resin and plastic field with epoxy resins being a prime example and then camphor is an Im important derivative of turpentine. So, like this whatever uh, possible uh, byproducts are there one has to see how to recover them so that to make the plant more and more economical. Because if you recover more byproducts and then get more money from the byproducts, the cost of your main product would reduce and then you know there would be more demand for the you know such kind of products. Lignin available in quantities up to 10 million tons per year has found little use actually because what we are doing in the digestion section, we are primarily you know removing the lignin and then increasing the cellulose content that is what we are trying to do in the digestion uh, section, right? continuous digester whatever we have taken. But that lignin we, we should be able to utilize, right? there are many ways of utilization of uh, lignin. It is chemically complex mixture of polymers starting from a monomer of molecular weight between 850 to 900 and then even higher also there. So, actually whatever the wood is there that is having the contents like you know cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin and then some kind of uh, uh, other uh, minor chemicals. Primarily these three are important. Cellulose, hemicellulose are uh, 2D polymers whereas the lignin is 3D polymer. So, its conversion to products requires large energy because the required activation energy for converting lignin to the product you know very high. right? So, but however, uh, some approaches has to be found or alternative utilization of such lignin has to be found. Otherwise, where are you going to dump such large quantity of uh, lignin? Okay? Because it is being produced or piled up 10 million tons per year or even more. Molecular unit is partially aromatic with phenolic, hydroxyl, methoxyl and carboxyl groups attached. Real use for lignin is actually as fuel, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, whichever uh, way possible, the solid material that is there after recovering the cellulosic contents, whatever the lignin uh, solid waste that is there, so that can be used within the process as a you know, solid fuel for the boilers, etc. Okay, that is the main use. Actually, there itself it can be used, but however, if excess uh, lignin is there that should be utilized for other purposes. Okay? What are the other uh, possible applications of lignin? They include a road binder for asphalt emulsions, adhesives for uh, flow recovering, core binders in foundry practices and then value added chemicals production by different thermochemical, biochemical approaches. So, these are not part of our uh, course, so then we are not going to see how these are being utilized uh, you know or produced or using the lignin. Okay? So, this is all about uh, today's lecture uh, where we discussed in detail about the chemical recovery uh, from the sulphate as well as the sulphide process liquors and then major engineering problems associated with the uh, pulp production processes those things we have seen. right? So, the references for today's lecture are provided here. Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden, edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve, fifth edition. 
Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology by Kirk and Atmar, 4th edition. Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Groggins, 5th edition. Thank you. Thank you.